All right, it is eight minutes after the hour of 7 o'clock. Time for a look at the latest on the local scene, local news on a gold country. Tuesday morning, it is the 17th day of July for 2018. Going to be another hot one today. The National Weather Service has extended the heat advisory for the mother load again through at least tomorrow. Daytime highs today expected to range about 100 degrees here in Jackson, close to 103 expected tomorrow. Now, nighttime lows are also running in the 60s and 70s. Now, again, we want to remind you, long outdoor exposure increases your chances for heat-related illnesses, especially for sensitive groups such as children or the elderly. Again, drink plenty of fluids, stay in an air-conditioned room, stay out of the sun, and be sure you check up on relatives and friends, neighbors, especially the elderly. And the Jackson City Council, meeting in special session Monday night, has voted to increase sewer rates in the city. The vote follows the required 30-day protest period defined by Prompt 218, in which protest ballots are mailed out to all sewer customers. Only eight protests were returned to the city, well short of the 50-plus-1 majority needed to block the proposed increase. Now, the increase was approved on a vote of 4-0, to zero, with Council Member Marilyn Lewis absent. The city cites a number of factors in making the increase, including the rising cost of operating the city treatment plant, debt service on loans to pay for upgrades to the system, and the unexpected cost of violation fines from the state of California. Under the new adopted rate structure, residential connections will pay a fixed amount of $28.18 a month per dwelling, plus $6.74 per unit of water consumed. A home with the average water use will see their monthly bill increase from $34.75 a month to $41.66 right away, and eventually reaching $61.14 a month by 2022 after a series of increases. The council also voted to award a contract for $24,000 for the restriping of city streets. The work will be performed by Centerline Striping Company of Elk Grove and will cover 95% of city streets. And an Angels Camp woman is dead following a two-car accident, according to the CHP. Just before 7.30 Sunday evening, the female driver of a 2005 Subaru was eastbound on Vallecito Road, east of Rolleri Bypass, at a high rate of speed. Rodney Sanders of Vallecito was driving his Ford 250 pickup westbound on Vallecito Road, east of Rolleri Bypass, about 40 miles an hour. The driver of the Subaru attempted to negotiate a right-hand curve, allowed her vehicle to travel across the double yellow line into the westbound lane. The left front of the Subaru collided with the left rear of Sanders' vehicle, the Subaru continued eastbound and off the roadway, overturning twice, ejecting the driver from the vehicle. As a result of the collision, the driver of the Subaru sustained life-threatening injuries. She was transported by ground to a landing zone at the Angels Camp Police Department, but died from her injuries prior to being transported from the landing zone. A six-year-old female passenger in the Subaru was taken to Mark Twain Medical Center with minor injuries. Neither Sanders nor his passenger were injured. The use of alcohol and or drugs is unknown at this time, pending toxicology reports by the Calaveras County Coroner's Office. According to figures recently released, California had its highest voter turnout during a guber, gubernatorial excuse me, primary in 20 years, and the percentages were even higher here in the mother load. California's Secretary of State Alex Padilla, who oversees elections, says the statewide turnout among registered voters was just over 37 percent this past June. While it may be a seemingly low figure by comparison, during the last gubernatorial primary four years ago, there were 4.4 million votes cast in the state. This year, 7.1 million. Amador and Calaveras counties, with many competitive local races, fared even better. In Amador County, voter turnout was slightly over 60 percent. In Calaveras County, 56 percent of registered voters cast a ballot. Now, voter participation is traditionally lower during the June primary and increases during the November general election. And Peak Street will be closed for a good part of this week. Pacific Gas and Electric and Vulcan Construction closing peak to all traffic today through tomorrow. All vehicles and pedestrians are required to select an alternate route Detours in place on Schober Avenue and Perry Street. Again, that closure today through tomorrow. 
And that's a look at local news on this Gold Country. Tuesday morning from the KVGC News Center. I'm J.D. And I'm Jim Geedy reporting local news brought to us today as a service of Gold Country Auto Clinic and Howard's Body Shop. For the latest news, traffic, and weather 24 hours a day, be sure to visit our website, kvgcradio.com.